Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be breaking down export settings from DaVinci Resolve. And there are four different types of export settings that we're going to look at. The first one is a low res export that will send to Frame.io or Vimeo.com for a review. And this is a small video that we'll be sending to clients to get feedback on before we deliver the final. The second export will be an H.264 master, which will be the final master that we upload to YouTube or Vimeo to essentially sit online for the world to see. The third type of render is an Apple ProRes 4444 uncompressed render. And essentially this is the master render that will sit on our hard drive in case we ever need to refer back to it or ever need to re-encode it for a different type of online deliverable. A lot of the work that we do isn't just for online. Sometimes we need to send it off to cinema or send it off for a particular TV station. And every one of those different delivery pathways have different specifications. So it's important to have a ProRes master to be able to put into Adobe Media Encoder to re-encode any type of different deliverable that we need in the future. And the fourth type of export that we'll be using today is an uncompressed ProRes master without any color grade or any visual effects done to the footage. And so this is essentially a way to future proof the archive in case we ever want to remaster it or regrade it. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at this project as an example of these four renders. Obviously when you're rendering you want to head to the deliver page and then on the left hand side here you have all of your settings come up. The first type of render that we want to do is a H.264 compressed relatively small uh, render for online review. And so I'm simply just going to render to my scratch disk and we'll just call this online review 01. Now I should mention that I always render to an external SSD drive that is also used as a scratch disk. This technique will speed up your renders if you are using slower hard drives, but the principle behind it is you're just splitting the read and write away from one drive and separating it across two. So if your raw footage is sitting on one drive, we want to read off this drive and render to another drive so that this drive is not having to do the work of reading the footage and writing the new render to the same drive. So it's just removing any bottlenecks. It may speed up your render slightly. When it comes to this low res online review render, we can use QuickTime or MP4, but we essentially just want an H.264 render in the resolution that we want to deliver. In this case, it's a Cinema 2.39 crop at 2048 by 858 pixels. The frame rate is 25. This will be determined by obviously your timeline. And then for the quality, I'm just gonna restrict it to 10,000 kilobytes a second. This is quite low and it's quite a bit of compression, um, but it just keeps a file size right down. Encoding profile and the mode here can just be auto and then keyframes is automatic, that's totally fine. What is important to change is the color space tag and I'm just gonna make sure that this is in Rec 709 and the gamma tag is Rec 709-A. The Rec 709-A gamma tag is something that DaVinci's brought out recently to give more compatibility to the Apple QuickTime preview. You'll see on the internet there are a lot of people complaining about a gamma shift when you export your colors out of DaVinci Resolve and play it in QuickTime on an Apple Mac computer. You'll notice that the colors are very different. So that gamma tag is essentially a gamma 2.4 tag with more compatibility for QuickTime. Data burn-in is fine for this and we just want to pay attention down here and this is really important depending on how you've set your project up and worked through your edit. So if you are using optimized media or you've created proxies and you've used a lot of render cache when it comes to creating your timeline, for example, you might put effects or some special transition that you need to render cache while you're editing. It's important when you do these first renders for online review that you make sure these boxes are checked. And what this is essentially doing is using those pre-renders, using the proxies and using the optimized media to form your render so the computer is not having to re-render or re-encode all of those different effects. This will make your renders for review way faster than they would be if you had these unchecked. Continuing down, we'll leave enable flat pass off and this will become apparent when we do our fourth type of render and subtitle settings. You can choose whether you have subtitles or not. 
Often when we're doing a first render, we're not worrying about subtitles because we only create subtitles once the final edit has been locked. And so we will leave that for now. Click add to render queue and then the render will be put into the render queue. And once we've finished all four of these, we'll be able to render all of them. So the second type of render is presuming we have finished our entire project. It's looking great and the final color grade has been done and we want to create a master render with an H.264 compression for online delivery. So this is when you're delivering it to Vimeo or YouTube for online delivery. And this will most likely be embedded in a website of some description. Now the settings are very similar to the first render. I'm just gonna change this name to H.264 master. And this will be our second render. Scratch disk is fine for this. And QuickTime H.264 is totally fine. Now when it comes to resolution, Often we edit in a lower resolution format just so that we can have smooth playback on the timeline. Now with the resolution for this final H.264 master, we really want to be maximizing the full extent of all the raw footage or camera original footage that is in our timeline. Often we'll be downscaling the timeline for editing because we're not too concerned about image quality when we're editing, we just want smooth playback in the timeline. And so we might be editing a 1080p timeline but in reality, the program was shot for a 4K delivery. Whatever specs that you want to deliver in, you may have to go back into the timeline and look at the timeline, right click and choose timeline, timeline settings. And within the timeline resolution here, you can go ahead and upscale it to 4K if that is how you want to be delivering your final. And hopefully if the aspect ratio of your timeline stays the same, then all the clips will just be upscaled accordingly. So back in the deliver tab, now you'll notice the resolution has been updated and we are creating a QuickTime H.264 master, which is full resolution. Under quality, because of that extra resolution, we're now in 4K. I like to export everything with 80,000 kilobytes a second when it comes to 4K. A lot of people might say this is overkill. You could probably get away with about 50 to 60,000 kilobytes a second. I just prefer the masters to have a little bit more capacity in case there are some really complicated scenes that require that extra kilobyte a second. Scrolling down, all of the encoding profile will just leave exactly the same. All of this is fine. Color space and gamma tag is exactly the same. We do need to pay attention to these boxes here, which we checked previously. I am going to uncheck optimized media, uncheck proxy media, and uncheck render cached images. The reason being is when we're rendering our final, we want to be rendering from all of the raw footage and the camera originals. If we have these checked, it's actually going to be using the mezzanine codec, which is the optimized media or the proxy media, which has both helped the timeline speed when we've edited, but it's not helpful when we're trying to source the best quality render. If you want to, you can uncheck bypass re-encode when possible. What this is gonna do is force the computer to render everything from scratch again. Enable flat pass is always off. And now is the chance if you have subtitles within your program to export the subtitles as a separate file, SRT without formatting or SRT. And you can also choose at this point to burn the subtitles into your video if the subtitles have been designed in a certain way. I'm gonna choose export subtitle and uncheck that because uh, there's no subtitles on here and hit add to render queue. So those are the first two types of renders, the most common two types of renders that you'll use all the time, a lower resolution render for client review and then a full resolution H.264 master for online delivery. Now let's say it's been delivered, the client's really happy and the project has been completely signed off. Now the next two types of renders are more for internal use and for archiving purposes and this ensures that this project will be safe for the future. So what we're going to do is head up and I'll just call this ProRes Master and this ProRes Master will be a QuickTime codec because we are using a Mac computer. If you're on a Windows machine you'll be using some form of DNX HD codec and we will be choosing Apple ProRes for the codec. Now, depending on the camera originals, you may not need to use Apple ProRes 4444, but if the camera original was shot in RAW 
or some kind of codec that has at least 12 bit color, then you're going to want to use Apple ProRes 4444 because essentially you want this codec or this wrapper to be big enough to hold all of the detail that was in the camera originals. We're going to be rendering this at the resolution of the timeline. And you'll notice with the Apple ProRes renders, there are no additional uh, bitrate compression settings. And that's because it's all determined by the type of Apple codec that you use. Now, every other setting underneath the codec is relatively the same as our H.264 master. But what you can also choose is the force sizing to highest quality and force debayer to highest quality. Enable flat passes off. And again, the subtitles can be there if you want them. I would never burn in the subtitles when it comes to an archive render though. So now we have a really high res QuickTime Apple ProRes render. We'll add that to the render queue. One thing that you will notice is that this render here will be significantly larger than the H.264 master render. Okay, so now finally what we want to do is create a flat archive render and this is really helpful in situations when we want to bring in all of the original timeline um, and perhaps tweak the colors or remaster it and so what we need to do for this fourth final render is head back to the edit page we're going to duplicate the timeline and we're just going to call this flat master i'm going to bring up the timeline here just make sure that we are actually viewing that timeline so what I'm going to do here is remove all of the titles and visual effects and any type of additional content to my raw footage. I'm just going to delete these logos at the end. And then what I'm also going to do is delete all of the sound design and all of the music on this track. So I'm just going to delete that. So now what we have is a voiceover with the footage. The final step is to go over to the color page select all my clips and I'm just going to reset everything back to scratch. So if we look through here, we've got all of these clips and there's absolutely no color grading or anything on them. Now in the deliver tab, what we have is a string out of all of our shots from this commercial without any effects or color grading applied to it, just with the final voiceover. So we're going to rename this ProRes Master Flat and use the exact same settings as we did before for the final ProRes master, but we're going to make sure that enable flat pass is always on for this setting. Once we add that to the render queue, that completes our four renders. And the reason I like to render it without any color grading or effects is because if at any point in the future I need to pull this timeline in, perhaps I need to pull this timeline in to a new project for the client and maybe their tastes have changed, maybe it's been rebranded in a slightly different way. And if I need to remaster this or use certain shots out of this timeline, it's going to be difficult for me to do that if the color grade and effects are baked into the master ProRes. So I like a flat render just in case I need to use these clips in the future. In a future video, I will talk about completely archiving the entire DaVinci Resolve project but I definitely do like to build in this extra layer of redundancy when it comes to just exporting that final ProRes flat master. You'll notice I've also kept the voiceover and that's just handy to have in the file in case we want to remaster it and put new music or create kind of different sound design elements underneath the voiceover, then it's just there in the file if we need it. But those are the four different types of renders I use for every project. Just to recap really quick, we have one render that is a lower res H.264 for online review. It's important for these files not to be super big because we want the turnaround to be quite quick when we're uploading to our review platform to get the client feedback as quick as possible. For this render, we can take advantage of all of the optimized media or render cached images and also the proxy creation if we want to just maximize the speed of those review renders. The second type of render is an H.264 master for online delivery. Now this is the final file format that almost every online video is rendered with, but we just wanna make sure that we're maximizing the resolution of the raw footage. So that means taking it from a 1080p timeline to 4K if the raw footage is shot in 4K or higher. And then we just wanna make sure that the bit rate is high enough to really hold all of that information. Now the final two renders, the Apple ProRes master renders will just take place once the project is completely finished. 
and we are looking to archive the project and put it away on a hard drive never to see it again and we essentially just want to create the highest resolution render possible of the project that's why an uncompressed apple prores codec is a great option or dnx hd if you are on a windows machine but if the client ever requests it or wants us to re-encode that master for a different type of delivery for example it might be going to cinema or be put onto some tv network and we need to create different renders instead of opening up the entire project again from the davinci resolve archive file we can simply just pull in the apple prores render into adobe media encoder and spit out any additional formats we need from the prores master and the final render that we talked about today is essentially just an uncompressed raw no effects applied render to ensure that we have all of the shots used in our final program rendered with an uncompressed codec with no effects if we ever need to use it or remaster it in the future all right there you have it i hope that information was helpful and brought you some clarity around the different types of renders you might need to use when it comes to commercial filmmaking as always please comment below if you do have further questions hit the bell notification subscribe and like this video it would really help this channel grow thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video